Well, fairly recently you may have seen me servicing a Retina 1A camera from my parts pile just for something entertaining to do. Well, this has just been sent to me by a customer. And if anything, this is rougher than what I had in my parts pile. So I haven't even attempted to open the front of the camera yet. I'm looking at the awful state of this. Let me zoom you in. Look at the state of this advance lever. That's corrosion. It's just pitted away to nothing. I've never seen corrosion like that on in an advanced lever on a Retina 1A or 2A. That's just ridiculous. Let's put a bit of shade on there. You can see a bit of the contrast in. I don't know what else I'll find. Alright, let's see if we can do anything with this. Well, I can't get the front to open. I think we'll I'd classify that as a problem. Okay, so the front's open by using various brute force, force methods. In the back of the camera is a fair bit of uh, corrosion visible there. The leatherette is obviously very unhappy. Now normally you can't get the leatherette off Retina 1A in one piece because it's quite brittle and um, tends to crack. In this case, that might actually be leather. Some 1As did have leather. All right, that's very nasty. Set the shutter speed is set to a 250th. That'll do for our purposes. Does the film advance move? It does. It um, doesn't feel smooth. Does the shutter fire? It did. So, as ugly as it might be, it appears to function. I'll have to clean this one up the best I can, but uh, yeah, it's ugly. It's uglier than the parts camera I put back together. Oh well, we'll begin at the beginning. Let's start with the rewind knob. That does come off. There's the collar. The advance there, now you can probably see from the top of that, that's very scratched up. That means that someone has done terrible cruel things to that with inappropriate tools. Well that screw's loose. That means whoever did terrible things to it, the tool was so poor that they couldn't tighten it up. Is the washer. There's a big blob of rust on that spring. I don't like its chances of surviving. This is all stuck together with um, corrosion by the feel of it. That 
that number disc doesn't look very pretty. That'll have to be cleaned by hand too. Okay, so the camera film advance lever can come off. The cat end of film catch is present, but it appears to be jammed up with sand and corrosion. So that's going to have to be stripped down and dealt with. The top cover is held on with two screws. Lift the top cover off. Not much to be seen in there. The viewfinder is pretty much obscured by a blob of crud right here. Otherwise that looks okay. Let's just see if I can get that apart. Let's have the accessory screw off first. Have this. I'd like that off. Let's take the viewfinder stuff out. That screw was slightly loose. That's a bonus in this case because everything looking corroded, if anything was tight, it was probably going to. Uh, caused me a lot of trouble. That's our viewfinder components put aside. Leaves me with the top cover. This film type reminder dial here, now that piece is screwed in. Getting it loose is usually a trial. I'll try using the end of a rule. Yeah, it's coming loose. That was unexpected. And that's their top cover stripped down. I'm collecting up powdered corrosion rubbish here on the bench top. The shutter release shaft. Let's have a look, there may be or may not be a washer present in there, a spacer washer. Doesn't look like there is. We'll lift this off. Take this apart, put the pieces aside. The film release button and its spring. Let's cock the shutter, lift off that gear, I should be able to get this thing to sit back out of the way. Want access to that screw, that screw, and that screw. The ones you couldn't see through my non transparent fingers. This is all very Gritty. I can't tell immediately whether that's sand that I'm seeing or whether it's corrosion product. And we'll take that little dog out and recover the spring. That disc can come off and recover the spring from this.
this little ratchet pull stops the film advance mechanism from being able to run backwards. Take that pull off and that spacer. Three screws hold the top of the film advance bush in place. Now this is an early Retina 1A, so it probably means it was made, what about 1951? So it's 70 years old. Okay. See if I can get this clutch to come out for me. That's reluctant. Unusual. Let's take this apart. I'm going to take the rewind post here. Those screws are loose. Just very sticky. And the inner and outer shaft here are held together with a screw through here. Now, in this case, there are two screw holes. They're at different heights. Now, I'm not sure whether that indicates that they were incorrectly drilled at the factory and then they Remachined them so they could use them, or whether they the height was different in another situation. I don't think they were. I think in the Retina 2A, this whole piece was longer, so I think they were just drilled and in, machined incorrectly to start off with, and then they reversed them and machined them correctly rather than waste the part. All right, that's the top of the camera. At the base, well, I've got a little bit of paper stuck there. P R O, it says. Does anyone guess what that refers to? This leather on the front, will it come off? I suspect it might. That is very crunchy. It appears reasonably sound. Because this is not at all pliable, it's difficult to get it off around the strap leg. There it is. And it is leather, and it's very cruddy. You can see how much corrosion's here, it's just a big thick build up. What about its mate on the other side? Let's get that off. Get that. Uh, 
difficult getting it over that strap plug. Yeah, that the leather here at the, the hinge it has been thinned out or scarred down. And that means that it's more delicate. And it may mean that's not going to come off. Easily or at all. We'll just pop that back down into place for the moment. Now this boss was put on after the leather. So the leather was put in place first, then this boss was crimped in afterwards. To get the leather off completely I'll have to cut right around that carefully with a very sharp scalpel blade and then I can lift the leather off entire. I'll do that when I've got the body completely stripped I think. First thing I, what I need to do really here is remove the lens and shutter assembly and then remove the door. Well, I've been lucky so far in finding things not tight. And the retaining ring is coming off without a fight. There are no shims present there. I'll put the lens and shutter assembly aside to service that separately. Let's have the door off. Single screw at the top forms the hinge pin. Likewise, there'll be one at the bottom of the camera. This one here, I can't even see it for the corrosion products. It doesn't want to come loose. I'm going to cheat. Partly, clo clo partly collapse the front. See if I can wriggle the door out. What I'm trying to do is wriggle this screw out of the bottom of it. There we go, got it loose. And stretch that out, lift off the door. There are two cartridge paper washers are present. Two screws hold this plate in place. Now this plate would hold the arm for coupling the rangefinder on a Retina 2A. Of course there's no rangefinder and so no coupling arm on the 1A. You can see where the, the arm would be fitted to that point if, if it was present. Our focus scale ring. Well I can see that the focus scale ring is pulled over the head of the screw at that point. But it doesn't look like it's slipped. So I'm going to make a couple of alignment marks so that I can put it back in the right place. 
and I'm making these between the focus scale ring and the outer helical, the bright part, and I'll make one at the top. So why has that screw head pulled past the edge of the focus scale ring? Well there are usually the main reason for that is that the glue the grease had gone hard and stiff and someone forced the knob and that would normally do it. But in those cases typically you get scratches this way as the head of the screw is forced around. The other way you can do it is if somebody accidentally forces the knob upwards towards the front and that will pull it, particularly since the screw that it pulled is there, that's quite likely that someone had knocked this. I mean it may, it may have been that the focus ring was further around here but this got knocked and pulled over the head of that screw. Let's have the head of that, that screw out anyway. It doesn't appear very damaged. I think that'll go back fine. Now here I'm supporting the front standard between finger and thumb so that I'm not pressing down on the struts. Um, if you just hold the thing down on the table and push down hard with a screwdriver you'll be applying force to the struts and you will distort something. But by supporting the struts between finger and thumb here I'm effectively only pushing down on the front standard. That's the retainer plate. This is, I have to say, is a bit fair bit of sand in here too. So have inner and outer helical. Now these I need to mark so that I know where the inner and outer are aligned together. So what I want to do is adjust them until I've got the front surfaces dead level with each other. Just checking that with a straight edge. And I can see that there are marks here already from somebody else. But they are obviously for something else. That was probably the infinity position, those three marks there. I've got this. I'm just going to mark across from my marks I made on the outer helical. So that the marks on the outer helical now form have two purposes. They tell me where the outer helical sat on the focus scale ring and they tell me where the inner helical sat relative to the outer helical when the front surfaces were level. Alright, I'm going to cover it in this corrosion dust. Let's have this off, this cover. Now this camera has a, a Compo Rapid shutter, so there's no MX sync because it's only single flash sync. Four screws here hold the bellows to the back of the front standard. Just push the bellows back into the body. These four screws hold the focus mount to the front standard. Here's before I'm supporting this 
with my finger so I'm not pressing down on the struts. This should slide out. Need to recover the four screws that held the bellows in place. I'll just get those out. We can go through the cleaner. This piece I'll clean by hand because it's got the felt uh, washer arrangement on the back and it's got paint there so I don't want to put that through the ultrasonic. Okay. That leather is pretty inflexible so I'll want to get this peeled back as far as I can get it so that I'm not having to uh, distort it too much. We've got three screws hold our tripod socket in place here. They are not enthusiastic about moving. Given the level of corrosion here I'm not surprised. There are two screws here hold this shield around the rewind button. They're not enthusiastic either. No, it's starting to move, but its mate's coming loose. The other one tightens up, so it's probably picking up aluminium on the threads. I'm going to put a squirt of uh, nap, put a bit of naphtha on there and see, work it a bit, see if that little screw will come loose. 